Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole, and I'll be guest lecturing for you all today on data products and interactivity with R. Before we get into it, let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I went to CSU. I got a master's of public health in epidemiology. And my first introduction to our programming was actually the course that you all are in now. Um, in the course, I found that I loved data science and programming, so kind of went with that. And, and now I work at our studio. I'm a senior enterprise advocate, so I work on the professional side of our studio. So in addition to the free and open source IDE, we also do create software that is paid and licensed for enterprise organizations. Um, what I do is, is talk with those organizations and help to think about infrastructure and software that might meet their needs. So today we're going to talk about a topic that comes up a lot for me, and that is what happens once the analysis is done. So once I have a code, once I've run it, once I have some output, what do I do? And so all of that really lies in communicating data. Most of the time, you're not writing in an R script for yourself. You're writing it to share with various end users, whether those are PIs, other members of your team, you know, external end users that you don't even know, the public. Um, you know, you're creating something to share. And so there are a couple different considerations in communicating data that lie in two camps. The first is for the analysts, so you all. And the second is for the end users. For the analysts, you have to think about things like where your data is coming from, what sort of sensitive information is in your data, um, and how you want your end users to interact with your data product. Do you want them to read a static report? Do you want them to be able to change inputs? Do you want them to interact with something like an application? All of those are important considerations when you're deciding how to best communicate your results. For the end users, you have to think about whether or not they can read code, whether or not you want them to go through the trouble of installing R in our studio on their computers, um, and whether or not they can interpret output, right? Because the type of data product you are going to give them is going to be dependent on the level at which they can interpret what you're, what you're providing. So the end goal for most is to empower end users, whether or not they know R, whether or not they are data-centric individuals, to interact with your work and gather insight with minimal effort by you, right? So you don't have to go back and rerun your analyses. You don't have to constantly be you know, overseeing what's being done. You create something, you do the work, pass it along and, and have something that's a little bit more on demand for your end users. So today I'm gonna to go through a number of different data products you can create using R. Um, the majority of these are founded in R Markdown, which I understand you, you all are familiar with. And in between each of these data product types, I will show you what they look like and then you'll do it for yourself using a data set that I've chosen for today. The, um, the data products we'll go through are parameterized R Markdown, HTML widgets, and then Flex dashboard. I have R Markdown written here because a lot of this is founded in R Markdown, as I said uh, to you before. So the data we will be using today is a data set on UFO sightings over the past 70 years. It's a really cool data set. It's, it's fun to work with. There's over 80,000 observations within the data set, and it's actually taken from Tidy Tuesday which is an initiative to give our users additional opportunities to practice data visualization. So with Tidy Tuesday, each week a new data set is released and then whoever wants to participate is prompted to pull the data, clean it, output a visualization and post it to Twitter to interact with the R community. So if you're looking for additional learning opportunities um, or ways to be involved with the community, Tidy Tuesday is a really awesome way. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to, to reach out to me with those. All of the solutions for the in-course exercises are on my personal GitHub. So this is the link. I definitely recommend doing some trial and error and playing around with the in-course exercises prior to looking at my code 
but if you do need do need some help, all of the answers are there.